was a course uh, announced uh, in recent days and Kerry wearing their all blue as well. So Mayo virtually in all red, Kerry virtually in all blue. Sean Herson from the County Tyrone is the match official. Colin Boyle, call it for us. Yeah, look, at I, I think Mayo are in really good position to win this game. Like I, th like I said, Ron, this is not a full-strength Kerry team despite what they have to come off the bench. And I, I think we, I fancy us to nick this game. Well, Herson is looking left, he's looking right, making sure everything is in order as we get ready for the 52nd meeting in league football of Mayo and Kerry. Mayo, the 11-8, to 8, Kerry 4-5 to 5 on, a draw is 7-1, to 1, so don't rule out a draw. Could be a third draw for Kevin McStay's charges. It is Mayo who are playing from left to right here as uh, Sean Herson throws in the ball and straight away it's Kerry on the attack, looking to work something with Dara Moynihan. Moynihan gives a short dink pass and Kerry looking for their opening score of the evening and that one's gone to the right and wide. Yeah, just looking at matchups here, Lorna, it looks like Inda Hessian is actually detailed to pick up Paddy Clifford. Connor Loftus has come wing back, Mark and Dara Moynihan, and it's Tom O'Sullivan picking up Ryan O'Donnell, which we did expect from the start. Aiden O'Shea has been floating around the middle early doors. He hasn't gone fully inside yet. He's just actually making his way in there as we speak. It's Colin Reap who goes short with the kick out, and Mayo looking to build from deep early on now. Working it out through the hands with Connor Loftus. Of course, operating in that number six position, a new lease of life for him this season under the stewardship of Kevin McStay. As David McBride from Balahadreen gives a short hand pass to Dunnock and McHugh. And McHugh offloads it. Mayo still in possession, just in around the Kerry half as Fionn McDonough, looking for support and options, gives a short to Jordan Flynn. And now it's transitioned forward to into Hessian. Hessian gives a short pass to Carl Loft, just 40 metres out from that Kerry goal. He fancies his chances here off his right boot, and that's gone to the right and wide. So a shot in anger from either side, and no scores yet. Yeah. Shot opened up there for Connor, right to take it on. Probably be a little disappointed, like I said, perfect conditions here tonight, about 35 metres out in front of the goal, but just didn't get right. I mentioned Adler on, he's definitely gone inside now and he's been picked up by Jason Foley. Here comes the restart from Shane Murphy, the man from Croaks, taking his time with this kick out, eventually gets plenty of distance, lands on the halfway line and won there excellently by Barry O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan looking for support and options available to him, gives a short to Pawdy Clifford, all the talk about brother David, but what Pawdy can do as well is quite frightening at times, had a fine performance two weeks ago as well in that game against Monaghan as they're looking for Jack Barry to find one inside, there was claims perhaps that Dara Roach was fouled, referee says no play on, Mayo clear their lines. Yeah, it's very interesting to see that Phil McDonough is actually dropping off when, Mayo, when Kerry get the ball. Here comes James Carr on the attack now for Mayo. Goes past two Kerry players, 40 metres out. Uses his power and his strength. Gets the shot away, but that's gone to the near post and wide. A second wide for Mayo. We've played two and a half minutes. Yeah, second wide and probably was a bit more in that for James to carry it on. So Kevin McSay will be a little fr frustrated. Two, two shots on the board, but no scores. But I just go back to what I was saying around. Fionn McDonough was definitely dropping off to, uh, to pick up Darren Moy and wing Kerry getting possession, which is allowing Conor Loftus to drop off in front of the Mayo full back line. Here comes Kerry once again, building from deep, just inside their own 21-metre line. Of course, the Kerry full forward line column, they were excellent against Monaghan. 2-9 from play, so we need to really watch them. Yeah, and when you consider Michael D, chance there when, when Kerry are playing an A versus B game later on the year, all them three boys will probably be on the B team, or very likely to be on the B team, so that just shows the depth that Jack O'Connor has to his disposal. Yeah, it certainly is. Really, embarrassment of riches, you could say, what Kerry have and what they're producing. They are the All-Ireland champions. We've played three and a half minutes here in Castle Bar. Still no score to report. Kerry in possession. That's a careless pass straight into the hands of Matthew Ruan. And Mayo now will go on the attack. Looking to build some momentum here. There's an overlap. James Carr looks for Fionn McDonough. Finds him. He slips McDonough on the verge of the D. And eventually Kerry able to regroup and win possession back. Yeah, chance opened up there. It was brilliant by Matthew Ruan. Got the interception in. Ball came to Fionn McDonough. He just hesitated. The shot was on with the right foot, but he just didn't fancy it. Took it into contact and it was great. O'Sullivan would have made a great turnover. And Kerry themselves, winner free, just coming out of their own half from that Mayo attack as Jordan Flint committed a foul. And Kerry have their free now. They just take it inside their own 45-metre line. Looking to build from deep. As we say, they have two points on the board. Losing that opening game to Donegal and getting that uh, win against uh, Monaghan. The Monaghan side who's finding 
life rather difficult in the early stages. Here comes Barry O'Sullivan now over on that stand side for the Kingdom. Gives a short pass to Dara Roach. Roach looking up at options, 45 metres out, trying to shimmy and shammy his way past Dunnaka McHugh. He's still going. McHugh doing very well to try and hold him up. He gets support coming through off the shoulder. Still there with Kerry. It's there with Pawdy Clifford. Clifford recycles it back out again. Now it's with Tony Brosnan between the 45 metre line and the 21 metre line over on that stand side. Trying to cut inside. Referee blows his whistle as hand up for advantage and Kerry get their free. Yeah, Kevin McSabe really frustrated with that. It was very noticeable. Mayo had 15 bodies inside the 45. They seem to have Kerry really stalled up, running out of ideas. Tony Brosnan drops the shoulder, takes on uh, Dunnick McHugh. Really, he's going nowhere. There was no need for a foul. He's running into Mayo tackle. So, like I said earlier on, Kevin McSabe would be frustrated with that. So this will be an opportunity for Kerry to open their account here this evening with five minutes just ticked by it's an opportunity for Tony Brosnan off his left boot it certainly has the height has no way has the accuracy and that one has harmlessly trickled wide the second wide for Kerry two wides apiece no scores on the board column we've played over five minutes now yeah considering the quality that's on show especially up front has been you know the three or four shots that we've had have been very poorly executed the kick out to come from Colum Reap Oh, that's a careless enough one from Reap. Gone straight to the hands of Paul Murphy. And Murphy gets support from Ehol Burns. Here come Kerry now, 40 metres out. Paulie Clifford going left fly. And that one is gone uncharacteristically wide. It was a good position for Paulie. It's a third wide for Kerry. Yeah, it was, a, it was very clear that Mayo intentionally were clearing out the middle for a kick out to Jack Kearney. But Colm Reap, uh, Colm, Jack Kearney straight down the middle. Colm Reap completely cut across it though. And Paul Murphy intercepted. And we were lucky to get away with that one. Again, Colm Reap going short with that restart as Mayo building now with Inda Hessian just inside their own half the man from Gary Moore sprays it over to the left towards Dunnock and McHugh and McHugh now plays it down that uh, stand flank to Fionn McDonough nice clever ball inside still there with Mayo O'Shea in the verge of the D trying to power his way through good play from Aidan O'Shea and in comes another heavy challenge there on James Carr uh, the whistle was blown already for Aidan O'Shea's foul and uh, James Carr took a big hit there as well in the process. He did, but that's absolutely textbook what you want Aidan O'Shea doing. When people think about Aidan O'Shea in full forward for Mayo, they think about big skyscrapers coming in top of him, but it's often them balls just pop to the top of the D. If he's out in front, you literally can't get your hands around him because he's too big and too strong. He actually got the free. The referee had the hand up before he got James Carr, before James Carr took it into contact and got the free. So that's really positive and really encouraging from a Mayo point of view. Yeah, Aidan O'Shea with an incredible performance up against... Uh, Arma, he was the Midwest Radio man. The match has two points to his name from that day as well. Here comes the free and Ryan O'Donoghue does the necessary. That's his 14th point of this year's campaign. And he looks razor sharp early on. These first three games as well. He does, yeah, for sure. I think he's been outstanding in the first two games and he's really got his form back from 2021. Obviously, last year was in, injury ravaged on, on his part, but yeah, he looks back to his best for sure. So after seven minutes, we have our first scores. Mayo ahead, a point to no score as Shane Murphy goes long with that kick out. It bypasses Manny Player and it's into the path of Tony Brosnan. Brosnan looking to play the quick ball inside to Dara Roach, but good defending back there and Mayo are able to snuff out the danger and now come on the counter-attack with Fionn McDonough. McDonough looking for options. He He's been tracked there by Jack Barry. Gives a short pass to Aidan O'Shea, but in comes Kerry once again. Still there with Mayo now. The captain for tonight, Stephen Cohn, in possession just around the middle of the park. Sprays it over to the stand side to Jeremy O'Connor. O'Connor, it's a nice, clever ball. And Mayo claimed the mark just about 45 metres out from the Kerry goal. Yeah, it's a big kick from James Carr. He missed one earlier on from slightly further out in play, but here he comes taking it on. I don't think he's got it. Here comes the attempt it's going to drop in around the house I thought it's got over the bar my word that was absolutely spectacular from James Carr when it left his foot Colin Boyle it didn't look like it was going to make it no it looked like it was going to drop about 10 yards short but tip, typical James shot he gets loads of air on it it looked like it was dropping well short but that is a super score and that lose confidence the world of good really good start by Mayo really good start by Mayo 8 minutes gone they've won this kick out again here they come O'Donoghue 21 metres out make that 13 he's still going back O'Donoghue oh, oh. and he's got it the back of the net what a dream start for Kevin McStay's Mayo Ryan O'Donoghue and the kick out from Shane Murphy and the man from Belmullet if you give him an opportunity at all or a sniff he'll be in like Flynn wonderful finish wonderful finish but Mayo are really putting pressure on the Kerry kick out it's been very noticeable just before that we nearly intercepted one with Jeremy O'Connor in the middle this time we get our interception I think it was Maddie that breaks the ball 
Phil McDonough gets in, picks it up. But when Ryan O'Donoghue gets that ball, he's an awful lot of work to do. But he looked so composed, looked like there was nothing else in his mind but to get the goal chance, and he finished it superbly. Well, very few people could have scripted this one after just under 10 minutes it's Mayo leading Kerry by a goal and two points to no score what will the response be from the All-Ireland champions expect fire and brimstone from here on in it's now with Dara Moynihan just below us here in the McHale Road side gives a short pass to Paul Murphy plays it down the flank now for Donal O'Sullivan O'Sullivan trying to cut inside David McBride McBride does brilliantly but the referee said he was overzealous and has given the free in for Kerry yeah, one thing I've noticed so far, the ref certainly isn't allowing a lot of contact. If the ball, if if you do take your man on, if there's any slight pull, if there's any bit of contact at all, he seems to be giving it with the ball carrier. So Mayor is certainly going to have to be careful. I think that was tight. I I, I think very much borderline, but uh, Kerry got the decision on it. Well, Kerry has the decision, and we're just passing by the tenth minute mark. This is to open their account as. See will it come off for him? It does. Dara Roach gets that one. And Dara Roach has been impressive for the kingdom as well since he's been introduced into the fray. That's 1-6 so far in this year's campaign. Kerry's top scorer so far. Yeah, yes. It's very noticeable actually that Ryan O'Donoghue and Aidan O'Shea are actually taking a turns to, to drift out the pitch. It's Ryan in the, it's Ryan out the field at the minute and Aidan that's inside. Here come Mayo again now. Coming at speed. James Carr off the shoulder. Fionn McDonough skips past the Kerry man. Standing his way now those Paul Murphy about 25 metres out. Gets the shot away and that's gone across the face of goal and wide. A third wide for Mayo. But early on Colm, you have to be impressed with the intensity. Ah, serious intensity by Mayo so far. Really good movement and we look like scoring every time we get up there. I think Jordan Flynn was a little bit unhappy with Fionn McDonough he felt the pass was onto him inside Fionn took it on a bit more took it into a tackle got the shot away but the execution was poor here come Kerry once again now the win short with that kick out looking to build from deep as Michal Burns gets onto the ball standing his way there is Stephen Cohn gives it into the centre short pass to pick out Barry O'Sullivan O'Sullivan playing a low trajectory ball nice pass to pick out Paddy Clifford now Clifford about 35 metres out gives it short to Donal O'Sullivan O'Sullivan trying to knife his way in past three four Mayo defenders but eventually it's cut out back there and McBride the man as well to make that vital interception and here come Mayo turning defence into attack great speed great passion and intensity as Jack Carney now offloads it over on that stand side and again a vital interception here comes Dunnikin McHugh the Castle by Mitchell's man 45 metres out from that Kerry goal two Kerry men come around him he still has the ball in possession but eventually he is tackled and Paul Murphy wins it back for the Kingdom yeah poor turnover there for Dunnikin McHugh just seems to get caught in two minds what he needs to do I think he just needs to come back and recycle the ball but obviously coughs up position and Kerry are back on the attack here here they come again now at Michal Burns Burns looking to play a quick ball into that full forward line looking for Don Lo Sullivan but again the Mayo defence has a measure of them and into Hessian doing excellently there the Gary Moore man well read a brilliant from Hessian attacked the ball just got a hand to him and, and was there on the break but it was interesting Connor Lofter's position right in front of there on the break really really good positioning from him here comes Jimmy O'Connor right underneath the stand side 40 metres out from that Kerry goal sprays it back to Jeremy O'Connor a careless enough pass and Kerry are able to capitalise and win possession now themselves here's Paddy Clifford around the centre of the field looking to switch direction over to this side and that's a really poor pass from Clifford there's too much on it for Donald Sullivan to get it's gone out for a sideline ball for Mayo yeah I think Kevin McStay will just want things to settle down here for a small bit the last couple of attacks we've turned over the ball quite cheap, cheaply so I think he'll want us to just hold the ball for a couple of minutes and maybe just build and work a score we've played 12 and a half minutes it's here in McHale Park. It's Mayo leading Kerry by a goal and two points to a point. You're listening to Midwest Radio on a Saturday night. Our coverage brought to you with thanks to O'Halloran and O'Brien Construction in the UK. McHugh in possession for Mayo. Just inside our own 45 metre line. Switches it over to the stand side. Here comes Kevin McStay's charges once again looking for their first win of this year's National League campaign with those two opening draws. Certainly the Galway game was one we certainly felt that we're lucky to get the point from in the end and the Armagh game was one we felt we should have got maximum points. Here comes Mayo now turning into some speed as Carl Loftus looking for options. Does a nice little one two the cross Malina man. Still there for Mayo back to Jordan Flynn. 45 metres out looking to recycle it. Eventually it's still there with Mayo. Now it's with Matty Ruan trying to navigate his way through traffic. 
does very well still there for Mayo in possession 40 metres out from that Kerry goal it's opening up somewhat now here comes Jordan Flynn that's absolutely spectacular score from Jordan Flynn he had the vision the awareness he spotted the gap in he came pointed it over the bar yeah exactly what I spoke about a minute ago Mayo just needed to take the heat out of the game hold on to the ball work the score and that was absolutely brilliant from Jordan Flynn when he got the ball it didn't look like there was a hold pile on but just dropped the shoulder and that just really tipped typifies the confidence he has at the minute in his game drops the shoulder goes past the Kerry defender and kicks it over the bar super score he's made a blistering start to 2023 hasn't he oh unbelievable yeah but his form last year was really really good until he got injured but he's really got that form back again and I, to be honest he's probably one of the first names on Kevin McStay's uh, team sheet going forward it's Mayo ahead one goal and three points now to a point. We've played just under 15 minutes. Kerry coming again over in that far side as Dara Roach out in front trying to cut inside between the 21 and the 13 metre line. Gets support. Still there for Kerry. It's opening up now. In comes Paul Murphy. Just into a sea of red. Needs to turn back. It's still there for Kerry. Waiting to get the opening. Waiting for the chance. And the weight comes and the point comes as well. Good clever play from the Kingdom. And that point uh, pointed by Dara Roach. Yeah, really good sco uh, score by Kerry there. And Dara Roach in particular it was a super run forward by Paul Murphy. He was actually untracked. He, he got the ball in over the top. He gave it back to Roach, who was on his left foot and a super score. He's not going to miss them. Certainly not. He's been very, very impressive since been drafted into the Kerry senior football panel as Colin Reap switches things up and goes long with the kick out. And Mayo have had good success in their opening two games in that and won it there. But just careless play from Matty Ruan as it's picked up by Kerry and they've taken that one cheaply. And here they come now looking to punish with Dara Moynihan. But Moynihan is unable to punish Mayo and that's gone wide. Yeah, certainly not the first mistake we've made tonight. Uh, Matty Ruan just taking far too long on the ball. You're not going to get that long of the ball at this level. He, he actually did really well to win the ball initially, but was just solo on, on the spot. Darren Moyne and spots that, get in and makes the turnover, but then ends up kicking a poor wide himself. It's as you are, Mayo ahead by four points, 16 minutes gone in this round three game in the Division 1 of the National League. Space opening up now as Stephen Cohn coming forward, 45 metres out from that Kerry goal, looking for James Carr inside. Carr out in front of his man, looking to turn, looking for options and support. Recycles it back out, still with Mayo on the 45 metre line now. And the man from Arda has it once again James Carr gives a short to Ruan looking for that pass inside and again though just Fionn McDonough there was pressure on and perhaps that pass just wasn't on it wasn't on no and Aiden was one on one inside if he just gets the head up and looks in just a little dink pass to the top of the D would have been beautiful from him because he was out in front so I think Mayo just needs to get the head up a small bit quicker it was the same with Matty Ruan in the last play when he gets turned over the Mayo fours look really really dangerous when they get the ball but I think we just need to move it inside definitely a lot quicker Kerry looking to move the ball forward themselves now with Barry O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan sprays it off to that right-hand side and Kerry in possession just inside their own half now with Jason Foley. And in these opening early stages certainly going according to plan for Kevin McStay's Mayo. A long way to go yet, leading by four points as Dara Moynihan sprays it back to Paul Murphy and Murphy switches direction now over to that stand side once again. Here comes Graham O'Sullivan and just the intensity from Kerry just simply isn't there tonight so far Cullum no just game has just hit a bit of a lull and just look at the Mayo defence and Conor, Mc, Conor Loftus has just uh, planked himself right on the top of the D protecting the Mayo full back line of Roy Brickton and Linda Hessian so that's really good positioning from him here comes Jason Foley once again now Mayo with 15 players inside their own half as Barry O'Sullivan looking to pick out Michal Burns over on that far side and Burns trying to get the run as man looking for support they're trying to cut their way inside Kerry off the left boot this one dropping short into the hands of Cullen Reap Reap does well pressure coming in around him as well but the Knockmore man does excellent there and clears his lines and now Mayo turning defence into attack here they come once again with Jack Carney from Kilmina Carney right in front of us here on the McHale Road side just turns back for support gets it from Matty Ruan Ruan to Fionn McDonough and McDonough now to Connor Loftus and Loftus will switch direction once again over to that stand side to pick out the run of Jeremy O'Connor you have to be impressed with the Mayo defence early on Cullum yeah really really good well it's been noticeable in the last couple of attacks that we've got an awful lot of bodies back so when we do turn over the ball that initial kick pass isn't on because we simply don't have anyone up there here's Aiden coming out on the ball again Connor Loftus with that quick ball into Aiden, but just plenty of pressure on there from the Kingdom defence and in the end Aiden has fouled 
as a free out for Kerry. Yeah, it was a good play by Jason Foley. But going back to my initial point, I think I'd prefer to see a Mayo attacker or two just stay a bit higher up the pitch because, like I said, when we do turn Kerry over, that one was a drop, a ball that dropped short. We don't have a kicking outlet at the minute. Here comes Tyg Morley, the Kerry captain. Gives a short to Barry O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan to Jack Barry. Barry just 45 metres out from that Mayo goal, recycles it back out now again to Tyg Morley and Kerry just trying to work their way through Mayo but in fairness the Mayo rear guard are standing tall eventually the free has been committed there by Inda Hessian on Pawdy Clifford and it's a free for Kerry about 65 metres out as Clifford goes short, goes back to Tony Brosnan and again just looking up, there's not many options for Kerry inside so they're forced to go lateral and play it over towards that stand side. We've played 20 minutes here in Hastings Insurance, Mikhail Park. It's Mayo leading Kerry, 1-3 to two points. It's Jack Barry just inside the Mayo half, looking up. Gives it short to O'Sullivan, Barry O'Sullivan that is. Still though, finding it hard to break through that Mayo defence. Eventually finds Donal O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan looking for options. There's a nice one-two there with Barry O'Sullivan. Now it's inside. Dink pass. Pick a pa Warren. And Warren's effort gone across the face of goal. That's a wayward attempt. And eventually it's signalled wide. Yeah, certainly a lot of the shooting so far has been very young Kerry like we say. They're normally very, very clinical when they get to these positions, but they're not punishing Mayo at the minute. That's a fifth wide for Kerry and some real uncharacteristic ones you'd have to say from the kingdom who are side normally so clinical now there's sideline ball, side line ball over that far side for Kerry and just a couple of times while Mayo have been impressive in the opening 20 minutes we have made a few errors lucky so far we haven't been punished for them yeah no it game to, certainly has gone a, a bit sloppy can Kevin McSay will be slightly frustrated at the minute with the amount of very basic errors you'd have to say that we're making Sideline ball for Kerry on that stand side between the 45 metre line and the 21 metre line. Taking a short, looking for Paul D. Clifford. He's surrounded by two Mayo players. They still manage to get it away. Still there with Kerry, about 30 metres out from that Mayo goal, trying to dance and knife their way through the Mayo defence. But again, Mayo defender standing tall, not letting Paul D. Clifford through. That's incredible play. Uh, Connor Loftus there. That'll do his confidence. The world of good. Uh, Tony Brosnan dropped the shoulder. Seemed to take on a number of Mayo defenders, but he ran into Conor Loftus, who got the tackle in and turns the ball over. Mayo transitioning forward now with Jermyth O'Connor. Got the pass there of Matty Ruan. Jermyth looking for one in around the house for Aidan O'Shea. It falls. It's there for Mayo. Could be a chance. Is there a player brought down? There's claims for a penalty. Referee has his hand up, blows the whistle. I think it's just outside the large rectangle. Yeah, it's very, very tight, Michael, uh, Michael D. But it's a super ball in from Jeremy. He spots the one on one, which is exactly what you want from the boys out the pitch. Recognising when Aiden is one on one in there, and it's brilliant by Aiden. I don't know if he got a call from Jordan Flynn or what, but it's just a little flick on to him, right into his path, and Jordan gets taken out of from there. Like I said, it's very, very tight. I think it just might be on the edge. Uh, of a penalty but again it's so so tight to call but that's a re that's exactly what Mayo need because I think they've gone uh, a small bit sloppy over the last couple of minutes so this is a score that was badly needed this certainly is a score that is uh, badly needed from Ryan O'Donoghue it's a gimme for him and that is uh, Mayo's first score in eight minutes and looking very good early doors here yeah, they are, but I was just going back to my other point. I think we need to get that ball in quicker. I'm not saying and we need to kick it every time, but the turnovers that we've made around the middle is when we've almost been hand passing the ball around needlessly. I think if we get the ball in there, there's danger all over the place. Kerry going short with that restart and building. Once again, Mayo now with a five-point lead after 22 and a half minutes played here. We know a five-point lead is quite dangerous. That pass from Kerry gone straight in the hands of Jeremy O'Connor. And here comes the Ballon Tower man now coming at speed. Passes the run inside. This is Mayo coming at speed. And they're going for a second goal. Oh, my word. What a finish. Well, he only does the spectacular. The pass picked out by Jeremy O'Connor. And the finish from James Carr. Yeah, Ty Morley be really, really frustrated with that. A very basic error on his behalf. Brilliant by Jeremy O'Connor. Reads the pass. Not just, not just intercepts the ball but then carries the ball forward really composed pass to James Carr and Wayne Carr gets a ball in that position there's absolutely one thing on his mind and that's to go for goal he turns inside in his right foot puts the head down turns inside Paul Murphy and that's a super finish low to the ground incredible stuff from James Carr got an absolute magnificent 
goal of the season contender one here a few weeks ago against Galway. That one just as good in every right. It's Mayo ahead now. 2-4 to 2 points. Just under 25 minutes on the clock. Kerry are coming now and surely Jack O'Connor is scratching his head over there on that sideline wondering what can they do to get back into this game and to contain Mayo because Mayo, while they haven't been magnificent, they're by far the better team. No, in fairness to Mayo, when they do sniff an opportunity for a goal like they did around with Ryan O'Donoghue, they're going for it and that's really, 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 really encouraging. It's Kerry in possession, just inside the Mayo half with Barry O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan gives a short to Stephen Cohen. Or sorry, O'Sullivan gives a short to Pat Warren. And Warren now to Tyg Morley. Kerry in possession, just inside the Mayo half as Graham O'Sullivan looking up at options available to him. Back again to Jack Barry. And this performance from Kerry certainly if you were to say the All-Ireland champions are playing out here this evening, you wouldn't be saying it's Kerry right now, although it's just six of the team that started in that All-Ireland final on show here today. But they have big boys on the bench if they're needed to bring in. Here comes Dara Roach. It's a tight angle. Off his left boot. That's just marginally wide. And that is a six wide of the evening now for Kerry. Yeah, six wide. It was very, very close. I thought it was just about to sneak in, but I think it just went on the outside of the post. The restart to come from Colin Reap picks out David McBride and Mayo building now from deep. Good to see the range and the variety in the kickouts as well, switching it from short to long. Yeah, there is, and that's probably Colin Reeve's strong point, his kickouts. He does mix them up very well. Very similar to Robbie Hindley in that regards, to be fair to him. But I'm just going, going back to Conor Lafters again. I've been really, really impressed with him so far. Not just his defensive work, but when he gets on the ball, he's looking to move it forward. He's looking to drive forward himself. I think that's really, really encouraging from a Mayo point of view. It just shows that he's, he's grown into his role in the sixth position. Jeremy O'Connor, beautiful pass to pick out Jordan Flynn. Mayo 45 metres out from that Kerry goal as Ryan O'Donoghue looking to play that nice pass beautiful one too with Aidan O'Shea trying to dance his way through Ryan O'Donoghue oh it's just off the post and wide that would have been absolutely sensational it was a beautiful move that's the move of Michael D he's pretty much playing as a wing forward as an orthodox number 10 in front of us at the minute but the way he came and took that ball off Aidan jinked back inside off his right foot and he'd probably be a bit frustrated for him that's probably a, a, a 9 out of 10 shot he'd be probably frustrated with that but the movement before it is just exceptional but you can certainly tell that he was uh, some top class boxer Ryan O'Donoghue back in his younger days with that movement that dance work yeah when he drops the shoulder like that and because he's so low to the ground once he drops the shoulder it's very very hard he's obviously so quick with it it's very very hard to get a hand on him now here comes Kerry themselves transitioning fast with Graham O'Sullivan over that far side speed Kerry 35 metres out trying to work something inside Dara Roach trying to play the return pass into O'Sullivan but again the Mayo defenders are absolutely answering every single thing Kerry is throwing at them they are and I'm just wondering I'm looking Jack O'Connor across the bench there I'm just wondering how long he's going to leave it before he starts unleashing Sean O'Shea and um, David Clifford because at the minute that Kerry attack just isn't functioning yeah we certainly could see a change before the half time break because it's all about Mayo 26 and a half minutes gone Mayo two goals and four points Kerry two points here comes Dunnikin McHugh now the Castlebar Mitchell's man plenty of space opening up for him he's just about 45 metres out looking to play a nice clever ball forward for O'Shea to run on to it's still there with Mayo just between the 45 and the 21 metre line on that stand side they recycle it back out again calling for it in acres of space here is Conor Loftus eventually the ball gets to the cross Malina man and here he is now right in front of us on this McHale Road side 45 metres out does a nice one to a cone gives a beautiful pass inside to Jordan Flynn and that's a thing of beauty wonderful finish from Jordan Flynn and great build up play from Loftus superb again the ball gets to Conor Loftus great pass inside his cross Malina team late Jordan Flynn who's just really in the forward of his form of his life everything just looked eff effortless for him at the minute once he came onto that ball there was just no doubt that he was going to kick it over the bar it's Mayo ahead two goals and five points to two points an incredible opening half hour from Kevin McStay's charges as Kerry going short with the restart Shane Murphy plays it out towards Paul Murphy and Murphy now gives a short to Pau Warren Kerry just inside their own half they look to be Missing ideas, trying to get something magical to work for them up in that front forward line as Paddy Clifford plays one inside for Michal Burns. But again, Mayo able to push them back out. It's Kerry around 35 metres out from that Mayo goal. Tom O'Sullivan advances forward, looking to get things moving for the kingdom. Back out now to... Dara Roach, Michal Burns and again they're forced back out and the referee Sean Hurston eventually blows his whistle and is giving the free in for Kerry. 
Yeah, I thought a small bit on the soft side there. I didn't see a whole pile in it, but sometimes, you know, if a, if a team is in the position carry out the minute, they do get the benefit of a, of a soft free, and I think they do on this occasion for sure. So this one is just inside the 45 meter line, right hugging the sideline. They go short with a carry. Doing a bit of a spin for himself there is that Tony Brosnan to try and get away from the Mayo player and eventually the referee blows his whistle, gives the free. Perhaps he could let it run on because he had the, the, the yard or two on his man. Be a free for Kerry just inside the 45 metre line with Barry O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan looking up at the options that are available to him. It's an incredible scoreboard. I have to look at it a few times to make sure my eyes aren't playing tricks with me and my mind isn't playing tricks with me. But it's a wonderful start. Mayo leading the All-Ireland champions. 2-5 to 2 points. Still a long way to go. And Kerry trying to get things moving, playing a quick ball in. But again, the Mayo full back line and the Mayo defence in particular are really passing every single assignment coming their way with flying colours. Yeah, it was Rory Brickland that got the hand in. Really good full back play. But it was again, it was Jeremy O'Connor getting back there. And after the first time tonight, sweeping up the break and moving Mayo forward. It was very interesting again. Again, in that, in that defence, they had 40 men behind the ball. That's a wonderful quick ball played forward. Absolutely superb. The vision uh, tonight really is incredible. Ryan, I don't know who there to, to win that one. And that's the rotation I'm talking about earlier on. This time it's Aidan that's drift out the field. He's in around the midfield position, picks up the ball, and it's Ryan O'Donoghue that's inside and picks up the mark, what he's really, really good at. Off his right boost, Ryan O'Donoghue. That is superb. Another impressive score from Ryan O'Donoghue. That is now 1-3 for the Bamullet man tonight. A super play in fairness to O'Donoghue. He's so, for a man that I spoke about earlier on, he's not the biggest man in the world by any means, but he's such a good ball winner he's so elusive and his movement is absolutely brilliant but the quality of the ball from Aidan can't be underestimated there absolutely perfect outside of the boot slicer right into his path so it's now double digits the difference between the sides Mayo ahead by 10 points Colin Boyle did you dream about this? Did you? <laughs> no, well, I fancied Mayo earlier on and look, they haven't this game won yet but look, at I, I, I think obviously Clifford and Sean O'Shea are going to be in I would expect very, very soon so that will change the game but Mayo are just completely dominating now. Wonderful play again there by Inda Hessian just able to flap the ball away from Paddy Clifford and here they come once again this time with Conor Loftus Loftus about 45 metres out great play there from Aidan O'Shea to be able to use his body well to shepherd that ball away from Graham O'Sullivan gives it short to Jim with O'Connor O'Connor off his left boot oh this is flawless from Mayo and a wonderful score from Jeremy O'Connor yeah you can just tell by Jeremy and Aidan that, that they've just been playing together for years there Aidan is carrying the ball forward he's not looking to turn and take on his man he gets a call from Jeremy just to slow it down he's coming on his left shoulder and that's actually one of Jeremy's favourite shot coming on the left hand side like that and cresting it over the bar super score and everything is just flowing for Mayo here at the minute the restart from Kerry going short I say Jack O'Connor just can't wait to get these boys in at half time and to completely regroup and reshape and I'm sure as Colin mentioned there will be wholesale changes no doubt the big boys will certainly be introduced at some stage in the second half as Kerry coming now at Mihal Burns Burns gives a short to Jack Barry and Barry to Paddy Clifford who by his own high standards as well is finally going tough out there this evening yeah Inde Hessian has done a really good job and I'm actually just looking at the two of them now Inde isn't giving them a year to breathe Barry O'Sullivan good ball to pick out Donald O'Sullivan O'Sullivan trying to dance his way inside there's two Mayo men standing his way make that three eventually gets it to Dara Roach Roach now trying to cut inside but again the Mayo bodies are there eventually gets to Barry O'Sullivan but Mayo defending is absolutely superb forced back out now the 21 metre line and that one is a high looping one in around the D jumping highest for it Jack is uh, Jack Kearney and Mayo now are able to turn defence into attack and coming at speed wonderful play from James Carr beautiful spin there from the Arda man but eventually he's uh, tackled and Dara Moynihan is able to win possession back so here come Kerry once again now just inside the Mayo half with Dara Moynihan gives a short pass to Paddy Clifford Clifford looking to his left he sees Tony Brosnan Brosnan between the 45 and the 21 metre line going to take on his man Super going to score. have a shot Super that's score. a super score off his left boot from Tony Brosnan yeah it's actually one of the scores of the game that was absolutely brilliant from Tony Brosnan drops the shoulder crests it on the left foot over the bar but going back to the previous move before that when Mayo turned the ball over it's just a typical example of the ferocious intensity that Mayo have, have started the National League with get loads of bodies behind the ball get the tackles in get the turnovers in and move the ball up the pitch what Kevin McStay would be really frustrated about there is that James Carr gets turned over while Mayo are on the counter attack because if he gets that pass away at Mayo of body stream him forward he gets, the, he gets turned over himself and Kerry ends up getting the score here comes the restart from Colum Reap and 
Brilliant play there by Rory Bricken, and there was a lot of pressure on him from Tony Brosnan, able to bat it down, and Connor Loftus now able to transition it forward to Jack Kearney. Kearney gives it short to Matty Ruan. Beautiful ball inside to Aidan O'Shea on the 21-metre line. Hops it, looks for support, gets it. Oh, this is beautiful stuff from Mayo. Here comes the finish, and that one has gone up and over the bar. A tremendous move, tremendous play from Mayo. They look very, very impressive on every attack, and that finish from Jordan Flynn. Yeah, all comes from the Mayo uh, kick out. Colin Raft, Connor Loftus gets in, picks up the break, gets his head up straight away, pick out Jack Kearney, who Tyke Morley is dropping off a lot, trying to play as a sweeper role. Jack picks up the ball, gets it to Aidan O'Shea, eventually finds switch to Jordan Flynn, who coming in from that left wing off Paul Murphy, he's causing him all sorts of trouble, and that's his third point from play. Here comes Kerry, but again, a crucial interception there. There's a wonderful hand in from Jeremy O'Connor, it was, to... Uh stop that Kerry move and again Mayo every time just not allowing Kerry through in case you've just tuned in 33 minutes gone here in McHale Park it's Mayo leading the All-Ireland champions Kerry two goals and eight points to three points yes you heard right Mayo ahead 2-8 to 3 I never get tired of saying that one here but a long way to go Kerry have an impressive bench and certainly when Jack O'Connor gets them in at half time he'll certainly be trying to change this direction but it's all about Mayo and here they come once again is into Hessian. Hessian, short pass to Duncan McHugh, on the verge, the large D, gives a short to James Carr, drops back the shoulders, gets the shot away, but that's gone to the left and wide, a fifth wide for Mayo. Yeah, James will be just slightly disappointed with that. He just pulled the shot to the left-hand side of the post, but just going back to when Mayo turned over the ball, again, it's Jeremy O'Connor. He reads them balls so brilliantly. I, I make that three or four turnover he's made, um, coming back, just cutting out the ball and uh, and setting Mayo the attack, but he's been exceptional so far. The restart comes from Shane Murphy. I just get the announcement there's going to be one minute of additional time. I'm sure it's one too many for Jack O'Connor. There is. They're just carry man down from that last attack. I'm not quite sure who it is. I'm just looking around to see. Is it Paddy Clifford? No, Paddy's out there, right? Yeah. Um, it must be Paddy Roach. Or is Dara Roach? Or Dara Roach? Yeah, yeah. Dara Roach. Yeah, it yeah, must be Dara Roach in yeah. that corner. So that could that could be the trigger if there wasn't a trigger already to bring to on Shawnee or David yeah, or David yeah, yeah. Well, David or for yeah. <laughs> like for like yeah. but I think if you're Jack O'Connor you're, you're looking at Mayo's system there and uh, Connor Loftus has been freed up far too easily there I think if you bring on Sean O'Shea if you bring on David Clifford all of a sudden that option isn't there to drop off a man in the in the Kerry forward line so I think you'd be looking at that and looking to pin Mayo back in their own half in the second half. Interestingly, it's Mayo making the substitution just before half time. Bob Tuohy coming on to replace Jeremy O'Connor. That's an interesting move, Cullum. There's obviously an injury there. Yeah. He's just back from a hamstring injury that he picked up against Galway, so that's slightly worrying from a Mayo point of view. When he made that last turnover, he made a big dive as he does to knock the ball away, and I did notice he did look a bit gingerly when he got up, so maybe he had it done before that or just after that, uh, just after he made that interception. So that's a small bit of a small bit of worry for Kevin McStay. Hopefully, nothing too serious, but yeah. As you say, just coming back from that injury, we'll find out at half, at full time from Kevin in the post-match what's happening there as uh, Dara Roach back up on his feet and Kerry get play resumed and they're coming on the attack now trying to get last one last harab for that half time whistle they're trying to work their way inside there could be a goal chance opportunity and that one has gone across the face of goal harmlessly and that is a wide signal to wide for Kerry a seventh wide of the evening for them that's the last thing uh, Mayo wanted just before the half time break because we'll talk about it in a moment but game management now at this stage has to be really the top of the agenda for Mayo because two weeks ago two weekends ago rather up in Armagh letting that five point lead slip there were some question marks raised about it and really Kevin McStay tonight now we're saying we cannot let this lead slip and it'll be certainly interesting going into the second half how we manage that game but just going back to that last attack Fionn McDonough excellent uh, Darren Moynan has got a couple of yards in him, but he just gets back, back enough to put him off the shot and he ends up pulling it across the goal the halftime whistle has just been sounded by Sean Hurston and it's Mayo who go in leading two goals and eight points to three points. A really blistering start from Kevin McStay's Mayo. Aside from the goals, the work rate, the intensity, you have to be happy with that in the grand scheme of things. Well, you said the word there, intensity.
Ghost, game on. It's going to be a totally different game, a totally different kettle of fish, but still, it's Mayo who win that uh, throw-in and are playing from right to left in this second half, leading Kerry by 11 points and straight away win themselves a free just outside the 45-metre line with Aidan O'Shea. And this is exactly what Mayo would have wanted to start the second half brightest, win that opening uh, play and try and build. Yeah, and Ryan O'Donnell's just left the ball down now. He's called up Colin Reeve, and like you said, Michael, this would be a lovely score to get because Sean O'Shea was straight away trying to create just a bit of physicality around the middle third there. So if we can just take the momentum away from what Carrier tried to build straight away, it'd be really good from a Mayo point of view. Colin Reeve nailed one of these up in Armagh. It was very impressive, and he'd be looking to see if he can replicate that here tonight. It's a good bit further out, but it's almost smack bang in front. There isn't much breeze. And I wouldn't be surprised if Colin Reap can nail this one off his right boot. It just seems to be trailing to the right, but 45. a Mayo man is able to bat it down, hit off a Kerry man, and it's gone out for a 45. Yeah, well, you talk about uh, chasing lost causes, and that's certainly what Fionn McDonough did there. An awful lot of people would have given up on that ball and be running out for the kick out, but Fionn being Fionn just doesn't give up on any ball. He managed to tap that ball back in, he hits the Kerry defender and back out for a 45. So Reap is going to get an easier opportunity now, but he'll definitely be looking to strike that an awful lot cleaner than he did in his last attempt. Mayo had four different scores in that opening half, but no score for defenders in these opening three games so far, which is uh, quite unusual for Mayo, given the fact that in seven All-Ireland finals, Mayo got 215 from their starting defence. And you were part of those uh, defences as well, Colm, over the years, where the bulk and the majority of Mayo scores came from defence. Yeah, and the Mayo public probably won't be too displeased to hear that, that the, that the defenders aren't chipping in with a whole pile of scores over the last couple of games. It has been mainly the fours which is encouraging obviously when you throw Omar Lachlan back in and you throw Paddy Durkin back in that attack and threat does come back in from deep oh that's brilliant from Colin Reap he nailed that and that's exactly what Mayo wanted two minutes into the second half Mayo ahead by 12 yeah and that was actually very Robbie Hindley like just one took one step back just stroke it over the bar he'd loads more on it if he needed it so that's a super score from Colin Reap and that'll do him the world of good and he's another player that you can see confidence is just building all the time just with the more and more he plays Jack O'Shea is that other Kerry player in at half time as well so that's the uh, trio of Jack O'Shea Sean O'Shea and of course David Clifford as well so it'll be fascinating to watch the remainder of this half here in Castlebar but so far it's all one way traffic it's all about the green and red leading this one two goals and nine points to three points here come Kerry over on that far side now with the Barry O'Sullivan looking to work something gives a short to Jason Foley and Foley now recycles it to the Kerry captain Tyg Morley Morley to Pawdy Clifford and Pawdy Clifford just funny a difficult skill to get things working from tonight got 1-1 against Monaghan Transitions the ball forward now for Barry O'Sullivan in the large D. He's bottled up, gets it away though to Dara Moynihan. Moynihan to Graham O'Sullivan, still forced back out now with Tony Brosnan, about 30 metres out. Looks for David Clifford. Clifford trying to work his magic and just give him an inch and he'll take more. That's a wonderful score off his left boot. That was like something out of nothing. When you talk about magic, and that's certainly what we're just after seeing there, that, an awful lot of forwards wouldn't have got that shot off because it was simply too tight. Into Hessian is diving to, on top of his boot, but he just simply shoots over into Hessian, gets loads of airtime on it, and caresses it over the bar. But just before that, we seem to have, I think it was Darren Moynihan wrapped up Roy Brickton, and I'm not sure who the second defender is, but they let him get out, get the ball out, which you can't do in that scenario, and it leads to Clifford getting on the ball and kicking, kicking the score. But you can already, I think David Clifford's actually picking up a yellow card yeah. there. I'm not sure what exactly happened. Did he give a, a shoulder to Roy? Brickin after he kicked the score just to let him know I'm here now and I'm going to be here for the next 34, 30, 35 minutes or so so yeah be interested to see what happens from there going, on, going forward but that's, a, that's what Jack O'Connor certainly wants to see more from his carry attack It's amazing the box office that uh, David Clifford is now is speaking to a couple earlier today who, from Tubber Curry who are actually coming to this game to see David Clifford alone he was there the main draw uh, for those people he is a class act and it's great that the crowd here tonight can see him in the flesh Oh yeah it's absolutely, and that's why I'm delighted on to be honest I was hoping he'd start even as a Mayo supporter because I just want to see him up close but at the same time I want to see our boys getting tested out here and Roy Brooklyn is certainly going to get that test in the second half here here comes the restart from Colin Reap and again Mayo do well to win that breaking ball around the middle and it was Kinda Hessian who had to work very hard to get that gives a short now to Matthew Ruan Ruan's effort is gone right and wide and well wide at that 
I think, I think it's been brought I back think, though. I think the yeah. referee was playing an advantage for a free on Matty Ruan. I think Ryan O'Donoghue is just picking it up. Yeah, he is bringing it back, but uh, just as well because that effort, now he was well marshalled while he was kicking yeah, it. Maddie just seemed to get caught in two minds. He was looking up for Aiden, the pass wasn't on. He seemed to take a solo even though he didn't want it to and next thing he took the shot on that certainly he didn't seem comfortable with and he ended up skying that but we're back on control here and actually Maddie's back on the ball. Yeah, Maddie's back on the ball. They went short with that one. Here they are, 35 metres out, looking for options in front of him. Gives a short to Fionn McTonagh, trying to dance his way through. Gives a short to Ryan O'Donoghue. O'Donoghue finds O'Shea, just a bit of work to do, trying to bounce his way around. There's three carry men around him. It's still there from they're coming through another opportunity and it's Jordan Flynn that gets on the end of that one and the sheer ferocity and pressure applied by Mayo the finish from Flynn well if anyone has ever uh, doubted how good Aidan O'Shea is on the ball in tight situations then you just need to look at that clip he's carry players absolutely bouncing off him he's able to turn weave take the tackles and still get the pass off to Jordan Flynn who puts it over the bar like I said to Jordan Flynn every, about Jordan Flynn earlier on every time he gets the ball it just looks like he's going to score and that's fourth of the night fourth of the night is right in a one Wonderful score at that. The finish, superb. Here come Kerry again, but that's a wonderful interception there from Jack Carney. But uh, Dara Moynton was able to retrieve possession, and Kerry still have it now with uh, Barry O'Sullivan over on that stand side, looking for support. But he's still going himself, actually. Now it's still there with Kerry. It's there with uh, Sean O'Shea, has it? O'Shea playing it back out for Dara Moynton between the 21 and the 45 metre line. Kerry still in possession, this time with Paulie Clifford. Clifford forced back out further again now and gives a short it's still there with Kerry David Clifford the man from Fossa gives a short hand pass still Kerry finding it difficult to break through this Mayo defence despite introducing the big hitters like Clifford and O'Shea Jack Barry switches direction over to that stand side pick out Tom O'Sullivan Kerry making some ground now but they're still 21 metres out from that Mayo goal calling for it in space is Jack Barry but they're unable to do anything and Mayo are able to win the interception there and it's Bob Tuohy introduced just before the break that's coming away with it Tuohy does excellently well there was three Kerry men gnawing out of him and he wins his free and again Mayo and everyone inside their 45 yard line defending that Kerry tack it was James Kerr who gets in and makes it his interception again we're on with eight here up top brilliant quick ball into Aidan O'Shea standing his way there is Dara Moynihan O'Shea slips back up on his feet he's about 21 metres out but just at a tight angle there's a sea of Kerrymen around him forced to play it back out to Jack Carney Carney looks up at the options available gives a short pass and that one has been fisted over the bar by James Carr that got the hand to it it was a well worked move Colm talk us through it yeah often them balls that drop short are so so dangerous for a defence and if there's any man you want in there it's probably James Carr because he's so good at reading them he's so good in the air and he gets a fist to it and actually could have been a goal but Mayo will certainly take the point 210 to 4 in a really good position in a really good position is right this is fantastic stuff from Kevin McStay's Mayo as Shane Murphy goes short it goes along with that kick out over in that stand side and looking to build now at Barry O'Sullivan O'Sullivan switching direction over to the stand side now it's there with uh, Dara Roach a score of two points in that opening half Kerry just with that one point to their name courtesy of David Clifford in the second half now it's there with Shawnee O'Shea O'Shea 35 metres out from the Mayo goal gives it to Barry O'Sullivan O'Sullivan looking for Clifford and O'Shea to get onto it it's now there with Jack Barry on the verge of the D there with Tony Brosnan now Brosnan a score of one point in that opening half but they're forced back out again this is great pressure being applied by Mayo yeah really good play by Stephen Cohen there he just really shepherded Sean O'Shea all the way across the pitch even though he's carrying the ball didn't dive in didn't give away a free and Mayo have really carry stood up outside here and they're playing it around the 45 trying to work something with David Clifford once again over on that stand side but even for a magician like him finding it difficult to try and weave his way through this uh, Mayo defence that has been really impressive all evening long here Kerry come again trying a different avenue a Pawdy Clifford now Clifford just still 45 metres out from that Mayo goal going around in circles and puts his hands up in the air as well to the inside forward line to say come on guys make some movement and eventually I see uh, Don Sullivan goes on a little bit of a half move for himself but there with Tony Brosnan now Brosnan about 40 metres out 
from that Mayo goal tights the sideline pressured on there from James Carr and Bob Tuohy yeah. plays the ball the into ground. the corner for Dara Roach and Roach picks it up off the ground illegally and I tell you one thing Colin Boyle but this defending you have to be impressed with it yeah it's good we talked about the intensity earlier on in the first half but that was really really disciplined they didn't dive in they didn't give Mayo or Kerry a, a handy out or an easy free and it was very noticeable that Aidan O'Shea waited up there on his own and here he is now yeah good, free good. Out. it's a free out now Bob Tuohy sitting in that ball to Aidan O'Shea but Sean Hurston had that spotted from way out now Aidan is uh, putting his hands up to say I didn't yeah, do anything wrong it's a very very harsh one I don't think you get that free against you if it's a, if it's a level game or a close game to me all he's doing there is uh, using his strength holding off the defender with one hand and about to go and collect with the other I think that's a really really harsh free against Aidan it's Mayo leading Kerry two goals and ten points to four points in this round one round three Division One Alliance National Football League we've played ten minutes in the second half you're listening to Midwest Radio on a Saturday night with thanks to O'Halloran and O'Brien Construction in the UK hi to Darren and all the crew tuned their way uh, they're skiing out in the Alps so they are and also the McAndrews listening to us as well over in New Mexico so lots of people all over the world tuned their way and surely delighted with how things are sounding early in this second half it's Mayo ahead by 12 points yeah it's very noticeable that Aiden isn't dropping out uh, half as much in the second half when Kerry get the ball he pretty much is planking himself in on the Kerry goal line almost past the keeper and he's waiting up high and when Mayo do counter-attack they're looking to counter-attack a pace and get the ball directly into him Ryan O'Donoghue is hugging the touch lines even as we speak he's staying out wide and pretty much playing as a half forward and that's good play there from Inde Hessian. There was a lot of swarm of Kerry bodies around him. Done very well to fend off that pressure that was coming in. And Dunnock and McHugh is there as well to assist. And now it's there with Matty Ruan. Still Mayo just inside their 45 metre line. But Kerry are certainly trying to ramp up the intensity levels. But are unable to really contain this Mayo side who are still full of running. As Dunnock and McHugh gives a short to... Jordan Flint back to Matty Ruan. Matty just inside his own half, looking up inside to see if there are any runners available to him. He decides instead to take it forward. Goes about 15, 20 metres. Gives a short pass and Mayo, at their leisure, will spray it back into their own half. And really, in a commanding position, you have to say, with just over 12 minutes gone in the second half. Oh, Kevin McSay would be delighted because we spoke about what Kerry are going to bring at the start of the second half. They're looking to bring the intensity, and they are looking to do that. They're looking to make the tackles, but they're not getting the turnovers they need to build up a bit of momentum. And it's Mayo on the attack here again with Conor Loftus. Conor Loftus taking it into the large D was between two minds if he's going to go for the score. Instead, obviously, of a short to Aidan O'Shea. O'Shea looks out to his left as Jack Carney. Carney takes a solo, slips, needs support. There's three Kerry men in close proximity to him pays it back out to Aidan O'Shea now 45 metres out from that carry goal into the centre to Stevie Cohn Stephen Cohn the captain of course for tonight's game Paddy is the captain for the season but in his absence in the field it's Stephen the man from Hollyman Caramore that will lead the lines gives a short now to Matty Ruan 45 metres out from that carry goal it's there with Ryan O'Donoghue now 1-3 to his name so far tonight now it's switched into the centre they're coming at speed Carl Loftus is opening up from he He's in the large D, trying to make room, was going to pull the trigger, instead gives it short. Eventually the shot comes and that one is gone to the near, uh, to the far post and wide. Yeah, that's exactly what you want to see from Conor Laughter, is mixing up his game, not just holding as a sweeper, but when the opportunity arises that he's driving forward and punching holes in the opposition defence, because that's one of the strongest aspects of his game. Fiona McDonald will be really disappointed with that shot, you know, he gets it in a perfect position almost to the, to the right of the D, far left footer, and he just pulls it to the left of the post. I just hear an announcement there. The scoreboard should read 2-11 to four points. And that, and that is correct because yeah. Colin Reap, Jordan Flynn and James Carr yeah. with those points. So it is 2-11 to four points. Yeah, that's probably not what the Kerry players on the, on the pitch needed to hear, that they're <laughs> down a, a, an extra point than what they thought. Yeah, so they're actually down 13 points. Um, but Kevin McStay going back to it again Michael Dill, like he'd be absolutely delighted with, with not just not just the scoreboard but how Mayo are managing this you know we, we spoke about the intensity Kerry were going to come, come out with but we've completely killed that almost and the buzz that they got from Clifford and O'Shea coming in that momentum they got or were looking to build is almost non-existent at the minute yeah in fairness that was quickly negated early on from winning 
that uh, throw in right from the restart and Colin Reap nailing that one early doors here come Kerry now though with the aforementioned Sean O'Shea going to have a crack it's from a tight angle and that's what these guys can do from difficult angles the likes of Clifford and O'Shea can get you those scores uh, that's uh, just absolutely quality like you have to hand it to them to carry the ball up oh, all the way up the pitch but what Sean O'Shea there did there it looks so so simple but it's so so hard to do and that's why he's one of the best players in the country brilliant score from Kerry point of view here come Mayo now going short with these uh, kick outs and this is promising from a Mayo perspective eating up plenty of yards there is into Hessian looking to play a nice clever ball and the mark called there as well yeah. and it was uh, St- Stephen Cohn Stephen Cohn yeah Phil <laughs> McDonald it just shows when it's your night it's your night he's actually going for Aidan O'Shea there who's running into that space he completely slices it and Stephen Cohn picks it up and slices the ball himself and that so one is right. just marginally to the right he's not renowned for a scoring pros but I can re- remember him right recently getting a similar one where he done a slicer a few years ago but that one just not going according to plan it's still as you are Mayo 2 goals and 11 Kerry 5 points you just wonder as we approach the 15th minute mark now in the second half 20 minutes to go is there going to be a fight back coming from Kerry yeah, at the minute it's just looking very very unlikely of course they have they have talent on the pitch but Mayo just looks like they've too much work done there's too much intensity to the Mayo play and it, does, it doesn't look like Kerry are going to get the goals that they certainly need at this stage to, to get themselves back into the game Dylan Casey switches it for Kerry over to that far side to Jason Foley and Foley gives a short now to Paul Murphy from Rathmore Murphy to Tom O'Sullivan and that's James. uncharacteristically high from Tom O'Sullivan straight into the hands of Mayo man it's James Carr again Brilliant. that gets back and makes a turnover that's about the third time he's done that there tonight and it's setting Mayo away on a counter attack his work rate really impressive as well and here they come great play Jordan Flynn gives a short to Bob Toohey and Toohey's effort just gone to the left and wide now the referee is uh, just caught a stop to play because there are a double substitution I think coming the yeah, Mayo way K- Killeen is one yeah Killeen O'Connor is on and he's replacing Fionn McDonough and I think Jack Coyne is the other yeah Jack Coyne is and in Jack Coyne is replacing Rory Brickenden of course Jack Coyne had a wonderful game during the week for UL in that Sigerson Cup final scoring three points thought he may be rested tonight but a guy like Jack Coyne I'd say he's just mad to play every every game well in fairness to Kevin McStay the option would have been to start him tonight with an awful lot of managers would have done so I think he made a really really good decision and not starting him and, and, and he's in there with 20 minutes to go it's nice now David McBrien is actually picking up David Clifford and Jack Coyne has gone on um, Darrell Roach interesting stuff as Kerry now themselves coming on the attack over on that far side looking to work something with Darren Moynihan trying to play it into the path there of Davy Clifford Clifford out in front two Mayo men trying to get close proximity to him David McBride is one of those men and McBride now he done well but the referee is penalising him saying it was a free now that's a harsh enough yeah. free we'll have to have a look at that again on the uh, TG Carr monitors to our right here in the commentary booth but certainly at first glance from the naked eye it looked as if that one was a little bit harsh and you wonder in a tighter game would it be given Conum? Yeah to me it actually looks like both players are pulling their own, uh, pulling jerseys and it looks like Clifford actually pulls McBreen's jersey first it's certainly for no free there if Anthony I would say oh, out. and that effort from Clifford has hit off the post and has come back to a Mayo man and we will survive that one not to be for David Clifford or Kerry and here come Mayo now at speed with Inda Hessian from Gary Moore gives a short to Matthew Ruan Ruan just inside the Kerry half looking up to see what options are available to him it's with Ryan Dunhu gives a short pass to into Hessian Hessian switches over to the far side towards Conor Loftus see Aidan O'Shea's hand up there at one stage as well as uh, Jack O'Shea is taking up watching him in this second half as well but it's Mayo still in possession now just around the middle of the park with into Hessian and nice and leisurely won't do anything risky but we'll try to take it forward now to see if they can get another attack going it's with Ryan O'Donoghue gives a short to Dunnock and McHugh McHugh back into the centre towards into Hessian Hessian again just looking up and we'll switch it back to to McHugh and it's all about game management from here on in yeah it's also with Kerry have made a switch inside it's Dylan Casey that's uh, now switched with Jason Foley and he's picking up Aiden O'Shea and Aiden has got a, a very sizable size advantage over him and I think Mayo should even in the last 15 minutes so look to use him more yeah it is Dylan Casey is back there on Aiden O'Shea and as you say there is a big size difference now the referee yeah He's given a free for Kerry. There's a big roar over that far side as well. I think it was a harsh enough decision. But it, nonetheless, there's a bit of a scrum going on there. But it's won by Kerry. They take their free, take a short. And again, a bit of intensity and a bit of afters creeping into this one. I see 
Mayo's Kelly O'Connor was just pushed to the ground there. Yeah, back up me, on his feet. Yeah, to me, this very poor refereeing. Like, Kerry are obviously uh, uh, behind well on the scoreboard. James Carr is definitely fouled there. It's definitely a free into Mayo. When you compare to what David Clifford got about a minute beforehand, where it certainly wasn't a free from minimum contact, I think it's a typical example of a referee maybe allowing a team that's slightly behind a couple of easier, easier decisions. And he's having a word with Killian O'Connor, and we'll see what's going to come. A yellow card yellow, yeah. for Killian for that push. It is Kerry with the free just inside the Mayo half. It's Paddy Clifford with ball in hand but again when you look inside at that six test there is nothing there for Kerry to target at and eventually Dara Roach has to come out to retrieve and gets it gives a short to Barry O'Sullivan O'Sullivan looking for the return pass for Paddy Clifford James Clifford Car is brought down by James Carr is definitely a card coming a black for this he was just pulling at him he was trying to prevent the run so it'll be interesting to see what he goes with here yeah could very well be a black card for James Carr we'll have to wait and see now Sean Hurston is doing plenty of explaining to him and he's getting away with it I think I think he is yeah. yeah he's getting a yellow for that one or is he he hasn't even brandished it yet nothing at all yeah wow yeah <laughs> he's for, very fortunate <laughs> James would have certainly taken that yeah I think he's very very fortunate it's noticeable that since Killian has come in now he's pretty much switched roles with Aiden. Killian's gone right in to the edge of the square he's almost on the goal line as we speak and Aiden has drifted out the pitch here with Dylan Casey following 12 points the difference Kerry looking to bring that back to 11 here comes Shawnee O'Shea and O'Shea puts that one between the posts. That's his second since been introduced at the halftime break. It's now 11 points, the difference between the sides here in Hastings Insurance, Mikhail Park. We have 15 minutes of normal time to go. Just again, Sean Hurston looking to his left as there's another substitution being made this time on the Kerry side. I think it's Stefan O'Cunber. Yeah. And he's coming on uh, to replace... Nobody seems to know at the minute. It's uh, Dara Roach that's Dara Roach. Roach. Sorry, yeah. yeah, so Cumber on to replace Dara Roach for these uh, final 15 minutes here in McHale Park. It's all about Mayo though, leading the kingdom, 2-11 to 6. Here comes Kerry once again now, trying to launch something in around the house. It falls for David Clifford. There's two Mayo men around him. Gets the shot away off his left boot. And that's another quick score. So two quick points in succession. And all of a sudden... These will start to add up and they might start to get their way back into it. Yeah, it's noticeable just on the last substitution there. Barry, Barry O'Sullivan, the midfielder for Kerry, has gone into the edge of the square and that was a direct ball from Paddy Clifford right in the top of him. He breaks it down to David Clifford who comes in and scoops it over the bar. So it'll be interesting to see our Kerry going, just going to go direct for the last 15 minutes. Mayo now themselves looking to go on an attack and to stop Kerry from uh, dominating these last uh, few minutes or so. But here comes Jack Carney in the middle of the park. Gives a short pass to Stephen Cohen. Looks to his left. Running there. Speed is... Uh, Carl Loftus, Loftus to Killian O'Connor, 45 metres out from that Kerry goal. Back to Carl Loftus now, just on the McHale Road roadside here. Back again to Killian. Killian playing a lovely, clever dink ball inside. That's excellently won there by Ryan O'Donoghue. He has lost it though. Jack Barry was able to win it back and carry when they're free. Yeah, it was a beautiful little dink pass from Killian, but that's the link up play that you'd be expecting from the likes of Killian, the likes of Ryan O'Donoghue, two boys on the same wa wavelength. Ryan would probably be disappointed that he didn't take in the pass because if he did, there was definitely a scoring opportunity on. Pulling off those passes, Colm, it just comes from experience and time and time again of playing with the guys. It's experience, it's quality. It's like I said, it's just boys playing on the same wavelength and replicating this so much in training and talk about it, talking about it, not just in training, but outside training as well. Here come Kerry over on that far side now with Shawnee O'Shea between the 21 and the 45 metre line looking for Barry O'Sullivan but again the Mayo defence are live to that and it's Dunica McHugh who picks up the pieces here come Mayo again transitioning trying to transition forward but uh, just Kerry holding up somewhat but they play back to Cullum Reap and Mayo now will come out here on this near side with Connor Loftus a run been made forward by Jordan Flynn Loftus just looking up and reading the situation gives a short pass to Matty Ruan Matty looking to play one over the top but live to that one with Stefan O'Cunber able to uh, negate the challenge of Bob Tuhi and he gets support from Tony Brosnan and eventually the referee blows his whistle and is giving the uh, 
free, I thought it was going to be free in first he sees signal, but now it's going to be free out and Jordan Flynn not best pleased with that decision from Sean Hurston, free taken quickly, good pressure and hassling there from Jack Kearney, but he's a judge to have fouled a Cunber. Yeah, they all just aren't giving Kerry a chance to breathe at the minute, it's just tackles going in left, right and centre, although Paulie Rift Clifford is coming onto a ball now around the middle. Yeah, space just opening for Clifford, gives it short, still Kerry about 35 metres out from that Mayo goal, it's a tight angle and David Clifford, what this man can do is absolutely amazing Amazing. His third point of the afternoon. Like there's some players he just can't defend against Michael D. And this like there was absolutely nothing Dave McBride could have got there. He's doing everything right as, as a defender. He's bringing them away from goal, and Clifford just kicks the ball over his right shoulder, 35 meters out over the bar. Super score. Here come Mayo now, trying to respond to that beautiful Clifford score with Stephen Cohn playing a forward for Killian O'Connor. O'Connor has to run on to this one. He's been tracked by Jason Foley. He's just between the in line and the 13 meter line. Plays it back out. Still there with Mayo now, 45 meters out from the Kerry goal leading 211 to 8 points we're just shy of 10 minutes remaining of normal time here here comes Aidan O'Shea now O'Shea trying to get past the challenge of Jack Barry he's 45 metres out from that Kerry goal as Matty Ruan switches direction now over to the stand side to pick out Arda's James Carr Carr taking it forward about 20 metres Gives a short pass to Killian O'Connor and O'Connor's effort is blocked down by Kerry and out for a 45. Yeah, I think James Carr could have actually taken that shot on himself besides giving it to Killian who I thought was actually in a, in a more difficult position. And I think James Carr just put the hands on the knees after that and I think he's just starting to feel the, the pace out, out there slightly but he's put an absolutely huge shift in. Like he's tracked back, he's made turnover, turnovers, he's got up. I think he's got 1-2 as well on the scored line. So I think Ken McStay would be absolutely delighted to, with that because James Carr is a player fans, supporters, players have just been waiting to show consistency and I think we're beginning to see a small bit of that into his game now and it's hugely encouraging from a Mayo point of view. Psychologically this will be important tonight because as I mentioned earlier Kerry looking to record a fifth straight victory over Mayo and when you're playing the All-Ireland champions and to get the first winner under your belt it is huge as Reap's effort comes Great and score. that one's just gone over the bar a wonderful score but a morale boosting victory looks like tonight Ah it does yeah we're in cruise control at the minute you can't see Kerry get back into the game but really really good again from Colin Reap. you know Robbie Henley-esque just coming out the pitch and stroking over the bar and when you have a player that can do that on your team it's such a huge advantage the restart comes from Kerry. It's Mayo 212. Kerry 8 points. We have 9 minutes of normal time remaining. Can Kerry try and trouble the Mayo defence? A few more times in these final 10 minutes or so. Stefan Cunber gives a short to Shawnee O'Shea. O'Shea off his right boot. It's been well watched all the way by Colin Reap. And Reap does excellent. Feels it comfortably. And will look to clear his lines once again. Just looking up gives a short to Dave McBride. He seems to be playing with a lot of confidence as well. Does the knock more netminder? He does, but what Dave McBride did brilliantly there, there's a high ball in on top of Reap. McBride stops the runner who I think is time bound. He's coming in on top of Colin Reap and making it off for him. It was really good play by the fullback. Kerry win back possession just around the middle of the park. Have it now in the centre. Calling for it there is uh, Paulie Clifford and also calling for it over on this near side is uh, Jack Barry. Kerry needs something to work for them and work fairly fast. It's Tony Brosnan in possession. To his right is Jack Barry. Barry has it. 40 metres out from that Mayo goal. Short pass to Graham O'Sullivan. 30 metres out from the Mayo goal. Now it's with Tony Brosnan. Brosnan looking into the centre finds Graham O'Sullivan. There now is Paddy Clifford but again Mayo have the bodies back everyone except Aidan O'Shea inside their own 45 metre line look very organised well drilled and are extremely difficult to break down here comes Paul Murphy now eventually finds a gap trying to take that gap on and that's a tremendous score from Paul Murphy it really has been a marked improvement you have to say for Kerry in the second half but still unable to deal with Mayo yeah well, that's a trademark Paul Murphy score how many times have we seen that over the years driving forward outside the boot he has a re he's had a really difficult game on Jordan Flynn he's actually switched on to Jack Kearney now for when he got that score um, but from a Kerry point of view look they look to get more of these to bring themselves back into the game but I think if you're Mayo you're thinking we're fairly comfortable that change I mentioned about James Carroll on I, I noticed he was tired he's actually gone off the pitch now and I think it's Conor McStay that's come on from yeah Conor McStay is on to replace James Carr but he has to be happy there are demand with his nice work as well another fantastic goal to add to his uh, collection Killian Spillane is also introduced for Kerry as well he's on to replace Paddy Clifford Kerry so. pushed right up in this Mayo kick out and it's really interesting that Aidan O'Shea is calling for the ball out around the middle of the pitch but Mayo goes short Mayo do go short with it and 
just inside their own 21 metre line. They're leading two goals and 12 points to nine points in Castlebar on a Saturday night with seven minutes of normal time remaining. I will be pressing Cullum at the end of the game as well for his uh, Mayo Mental Health Association man of the match. We'll get to that at the end of the game. But here come Mayo over on the far side looking to uh, get bodies moving and get into the scoring positions calling for it there is Jack Carney the Kilmina man gets onto it to his left he has Bob Tuhi offloads the pass to the Mitchells man Tuhi looking inside for Aidan O'Shea but O'Shea in this occasion was just negated but O'Shea being O'Shea doesn't give up and done very well to win it back at the second time of asking soccer styles it out now to Bob Tuhi Tuhi into the centre to Matthew Ruan Mayo 40 metres out from that Kerry goal Ruan is still going past the challenge of Paul Murphy looking for options back to Killian O'Connor Stefan O'Connor gets close to him, but O'Connor still able to fend off his challenge. And back now to Bob Tuhi. Mayo looking very comfortable on the ball and not being phased by Kerry really at all in these uh, final closing stages as well. You'd imagine it'd be Kerry who'd be trying to chase the game, but it's all Mayo. And here That's they come brilliant. now. O'Connor McStay, quick transition through. There could be a goal chance opportunity, but they're going to take the point. And that was a wonderful, well worked move. The patience and in the end, the vision to just see the space opening up and the finish from Dunnick McHugh. Yeah, move the ball from one point, to the, one point of the field to another ball was initially looked like it was dead looked like we'd lost it Killian O'Connor just fought for his life for it. managed to keep it in play we got a couple of passes together and I think it was Dunip Kikou came in from a pass from uh, I think it was Conor McStay yep. that, that flicked it onto him and brilliant play uh, could have gone for a goal but I think he's dead right to go for the point in this in this scenario Mayo comfortable that big roar you heard was for Paddy Dirk and great to see Paddy back from his injury as well Paddy on to replace Stephen Cohn a huge roar Paddy's one of these guys he's loved in the county uh, he is and what a player um, great to have him in like I said he was looking really really good in the warm up I was keeping an eye on him and interestingly he's gone straight in to pick up Sean O'Shea five minutes of normal time remaining it's Mayo two goals and 13 points Kerry 9 points here comes Graham O'Sullivan now for the Kingdom taking it forward gives a short to his right to Tom O'Sullivan and now into the centre it's with Tony Brosnan Brosnan finds Sean O'Shea now Tyg Morley, the Kerry captain, playing it into the corner for Killian Spillane to chase, but just the bounce caught Spillane and Mayo again reading very well. Yeah, it's just not happening for Kerry in there. You can see it. Mayo just have, have everything's kind of snuffed out at the minute and it really looks like they're just playing out the clock now. Mayo just players out there are loving this evening they're really loving their football there's a pep in their step as Killian O'Connor now entering into the Kerry half to his left is Paddy Durkham Paddy has it in possession with those trademark white boots now it's back to Bob Tuhi. Tuhi looking to play one into the centre finds Jack Kearney sells Let's the go. dummy Let's oh go. what a dummy to sell you wouldn't get it in a draper shop and the finish from the Kilmina man was immaculate a super score and fair play to Bob Tuhi. he took on a shot probably 10 minutes ago a difficult shot from pretty much around the same position he came onto the ball there and he put it out to the left and wide but he learned from that that shot wasn't on he was in the same position he thought about it for a second, then dummy back inside, gave it to Jack Carney, and that's a super score. He swiveled, turned on his left foot. Brilliant, brilliant score. Now, Aidan O'Shea has picked up a yellow card there from Sean Hurston. Not too sure what that was. Perhaps some off the ball or something that Sean Hurston spotted after that Jack Carney score, but it was a superb score from the Kilmina man. And we have three minutes of normal time remaining now, and once again, Mayo ahead by 11 points. Here comes Kerry now with Sean O'Shea at the opposite end. O'Shea looking for options, gives a short pass there to Barry O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan, as he was turning, kicked that one, and again to the near post and wide. I make that, uh, I think their ninth wide of the night. Yeah, and I said in the first half, very, very young Kerry like. It's not often you're going to play Kerry and they're going to miss as many opportunities, but just as scoreable opportunities as they did tonight. So, look, it kind of sums up the night for them. They certainly went hard it. I heard this morning that they've tra they have travelled down today and straight away I was thinking that's an advantage for Mayo because travelling all the way from Kerry the day of a game is certainly certainly a disadvantage. I wouldn't like it as a player. And I think Mayo have used whatever advantage it was their, um, that they got tonight. They've used it fully to their uh, to their favour. Yeah, they're heading back tonight as well. I believe uh, Sean Julian from Treen Law Catering have the packed lunches ready for them as they get their bus journey back home and that's interception again. Tremendous stuff there from Mayo. It was excellently read by David McBride and here comes Ryan O'Donoghue, the brand ambassador for Cardiff Travel. He's motoring well looking for Bob Tuohy and that's just snuffed out there by uh, Jason Foley and Kerry now turning defence into attack. It's with Jack Barry gives a short pass to centre to David Clifford switches it over now to the stand side there with Graham O'Sullivan. Less 
than 90 seconds of normal time remaining and this is all about Mayo tonight a wonderful performance from start to finish leading Kerry 214 to 9 points they're in the centre now there is uh, Paul Murphy Murphy looking at options available to him and up front finds Tony Brosnan Brosnan sees to his right is Tom O'Sullivan instead looking to play it into the centre to pick out Paul Murphy Murphy going to sit one in around the house a dangerous one in there lurking is uh, Barry O'Sullivan he turns and he shoots and he scores in the back of the net yeah that's what I talked about earlier on he was playing midfield for most of the game they moved him in for the last five minutes and it looked like they were going to get more direct ball on top of him that's exactly what they did didn't seem to be much on there Paul Murphy gets the ball floats it across Barry O'Sullivan wins it in front of Paddy Durk and turns and puts it into the bottom corner on the 69th minute, Kerry have got their goal from Barry O'Sullivan. So it is Mayo now, 2-14, Kerry 1-9. But that won't uh, bother Kevin McStay and Mayo too much, to be fair. Overall, in the grand scheme of things, he has to be pleased. There's lots and lots of positives to take from this game. Oh, OK, yeah. you can throw into the mix if you want to be critical. There are a few, of uh, course. Oh, there's always room for improvement. Absolutely, yeah. He probably will be a, fo- a small bit frustrated that there wasn't someone sitting in front of, uh, I think it was Paddy Durkin in that scenario. But look at that, as you said, the positives far outweigh the negatives tonight. Four minutes of additional time announced here at the end of this game. That's a crucial reception there from Jack Barry. T- that hand onto it. And now it's with Tony Brosnan. And here come Kerry again transitioning forward with Darren Moynihan in the large Z. Moynihan kicks it up and kicks it over the bar and that's another one. 1-1 one, one in quick succession from Kerry. Good job it's not closer or we could be in for uh, deja vu from the other grounds. Yeah and if Conor Laughter gets his head up there, Aidan O'Shea is 1-1 one one pretty much inside the 45 on his own with Dylan Casey but he doesn't. He takes the ball into contact, gives it to Killian O'Connor who, who comes short from it and it's a turnover and we were actually exposed at the back there. We were probably lucky that Darren Moynihan took the point so just interesting we need to play out this couple of minutes well now okay we just need to move the ball get the ball up the other end of the pitch it is Mayo 214 Kerry 110 so seven points is the difference but we're into the first of four minutes of additional time as Ryan O'Donoghue gathers possession around the middle of the park gives a short to Conor McStay it's his quick hands and quick movement again off the shoulder speed is in De Hessian. now it's with Jordan Flynn 35 metres out from that Kerry goal needs to turn back finds Jack Carney and now it's with Killian O'Connor 45 metres out from the Kerry goal as Matty Ruan looks up back to Jack Carney and Carney gives it again to Killian who's over on that stand side exactly 45 metres out gives a short foot pass to in De Hessian. Now it's with Conor Loftus and the cross Malina man will take it forward. And again, this running and speed from Loftus going past two Kerry men. Back he gives it now to Mayo's Paddy Durkin off his right boot. Paddy Durkin and that's just dropped short into the hands of Shane Murphy and Kerry will clear their lines. Yeah, Paddy would be disappointed with that. That's a shot from him. He normally nails. Uh, I think Mayo looking to take the sting out of this game it's no sense killing him on he's looked for an awful lot of bo- uh, ball short he's looking really just to hold the ball use possession wisely and I think Mayo have used him very well in the second half in that regards it's Mayo in possession or Kerry in possession rather around the centre of the park with Stefan O'Cunber they're now to Tony Brosnan and Brosnan back into the centre to Tyg Morley the Kerry captain O'Cunber has it just in the verge of the D Morley quick hands from Kerry back now it's there with Killian Spillane Spillane they're looking for a goal Kerry they're to the one two Spillane goes and that's uh, just is that just kept out yeah. by Colin Reap yeah. now the umpire is taking a good look as well Reap done very well because that was almost in the back of the net yeah and I think he was cleaned out of it then after he let the ball go but it was really really good by Colin Reap because he could have stepped back over the line with it but he managed to stay where he was and, and, and get the ball out and I think the referee is speaking to Paul Murphy it is here could be a yellow card yeah it is a yellow card for Paul Murphy yeah, just a small bit of frustration on his behalf I'd say just a bit of a lash out a late, a late kick out yeah but uh, wonderful again from Colin Reap with Robbie Hindley you know, still yeah. to come back. I tell you, the number one spot, it'll be hard to take that jersey off Colin Reap. But when a player gets playing Michael D and he gets form, he gets a bit of momentum and he gets confidence, it's very hard to take that away from him. It's very hard to dislodge him. And especially in a goalkeeping spot, when you don't get an opportunity on many occasions, normally with the keeper, if you are sub keeper, Colin has got three opportunities now and he's done exceptionally well. So at the minute, you'd have to say he is looking like probably your, your number one. Obviously, you have Robbie Hindley, one of the best keepers in the country, to come back. But that'll only drive Robbie on to become better as well. 
well so competition is very very good and if you look all around the squad at the minute we probably hit the, a lot of competition in loads of lines in the field which is really positive it's great to have that competition we had it for so long with David Clark and Robbie Henley so it's great to have that uh, as they say competition is uh, the spice of life that uh, restart there from Colin Reap it almost went straight in the hands of David Clifford just when we're lauding his praises he almost gave it away but excellent play from Dunnick and McHugh to try and uh, just deter the danger that was about to happen and there's been a foul over on the far side referee blows his whistle as I say the commentator's curse <laughs> almost came yeah, back to we, haunt us we certainly nearly did I'm just looking at this here Darren Moyne and makes a tackle on Killian there's not much in it to be honest I think Killian is just kind of playing down the clock here Darren Moynan has been spoken to by the referee but I don't think there's a whole pile in it might get a yellow card but I think it's just a bit of cuteness by Killian just killed the game obviously Kerry built up a small bit of momentum there got the goal almost got an interception on that short free David Clifford probably the last man in the world that you want to get the get a free off to but uh, we managed to get away with it I think we're going to see this out comfortably over the next minute or so Yeah just a minute to go here as I hear the uh, announcer telling the children and supporters not to go on the field it gets a big roar from everyone as well to say try and stop that try and stop a couple of thousand children from running on the field to meet their heroes after this big big game over on the far side there's a bit of off the yeah, ball Aiden shenanigans O'Shea's as well Aiden O'Shea is uh, caught in the mix yeah. there and now it's the influx of supporters onto the field the full time whistle has sounded now it's still spilling over Stefan O'Cunber is coming on there as well so hopefully eventually yeah. it is they, they hold and make yeah. up it's settled down but perhaps with the uh, influx the children coming on <laughs> yeah, no choice. had to, to, to stop that from happening but the full time whistle has sounded and it's Mayo's first win under Kevin McStay in the National Football League they've defeated Kerry 214 to 110 and I tell you Colin Boyle we we're all optimists and we were all hoping for the win and really looking at it said we had a great chance tonight but very few people could have predicted winning in this fashion